why your children should not be someone else's experiment. That's heavy. That's heavy stuff. Can you hear that? Say it one more time. Why your children should not be someone else's experiment. Now there are certain truths that the God liturgy of this age would do everything to keep us from seeing. How do you hear that? The God of this age would do anything to keep you and me and, and keep the world deaf, blind, dumb, and not able to see the truth. I'll give you two scriptures, uh, two references that will really help us see that, and then I'm going to get into this. And uh, one would be the truth about ourselves. That, that's not really what I'm going to talk about. But have you know the truth that the devil, the enemy, the God of this world, uh, would like to keep you from really facing and looking at is yourself. Hello? Yeah. Because if it's everybody else's fault, you go right along deceived like a snake. Uh, John chapter 12, verse 36. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Verse 37, though he had done so many signs, so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him. Have you, have you understand and see that? He did so many signs and wonders and miracles. In spite of it, they still didn't believe him. Hello. And verse 38, so that the word spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. How many of you know, believers are blinded. So the first group that I want you to see is that the enemy will do everything to get the believers blinded. Okay, we'll move on in a minute. Uh, and then it says uh, what Isaiah had said, Lord, who has believed uh, what he heard from us, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Verse 39, therefore they could not believe. Have you hear that? They could not believe. Uh, for again, Isaiah said, verse 40, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. Let me see that. He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart, and turn, and he said, if they did, I'd heal them. How I mean, you know the enemy doesn't want you healed? How I mean, you know he doesn't want your misery to go away? He wants you to stay miserable. He doesn't want your wounds uh, to ever heal. He wants you to stay wounded. Come on. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. So we see first in that scripture there of John that the believer can be blinded. How many of you, since you've been born again, have been blinded? Have you been blinded? Blindsided? Yeah. Oh, I get blindsided all the time. People shoot things at me and I have no idea it's coming. Boom! Next thing I know, I'm whacked upside the head with something. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. The God of this age again. Now, here we go. You, you, you there? I mean, you're spiritually with me now. The God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. So that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. So now, who's blinded? The unbeliever. the unbeliever. So the unbeliever cannot see how good God is. How do you hear that? Yeah. So if you have the, the Bible says the blind lead the blind, they all fall in the ditch. How many of you know that, that, that if, if you're blind as a believer, they're blind as an unbeliever? How many of you know we got a lot of blind people? And, and we need some light. We need some, we need some healing. How many of you say amen? amen? And we need to be able to hear and see. And so he says that he's blinded the unbeliever. Why? So that they wouldn't see. Right? And they wouldn't see the light of the gospel. And how many of you know the gospel is good news? Yeah. And how many of you know before you really gave your heart to the Lord, 
How many you know that the enemy did everything he could to keep you blind? I mean, he, he made you think it was this when it was that. He made you feel this instead of that. I mean, he just dealt with you constantly so that you wouldn't dare believe. Are you hearing me today? Now, I want to show you three snippet little video clips. These are small little video clips. And I'm going to show you this, and then I'm going to read a, a little article to you, and then I'll give you the last part of my point here for you to get this. Because I believe, I believe what I said to you. Our children should not be other people's experiments. And I'm going to prove to you today that the intent and the history of our current educational system is designed for your children to be their experiment so that they can do some things that they have on their agenda. Let's see the first video. Let me, before you click it, I'm sorry, hold it. Uh, the first one is this. How many of you ever heard of a guy named Cal Thomas? Okay. He's a, he's a, a newsman. And uh, he, he did a little show the other day called Lost Generation Abandoning Traditional American Values. Let's watch that for a second. Turn on. second one Fox News again and this is a guy that you see sometimes Hannity probably and it's on patriotism it's a survey younger Americans turning towards socialism let's look at it joining us now he is the well he's our correspondent at large investigative reporter uh, from well the editor-in-chief also of campus reform Fox News contributor Lawrence Jones along with relatable podcast host Ali Beth Stuckey is that what you hear, both of you? I'll start with you, Lawrence. That's what young people think. Are we not telling them about America's sacrifice for the cause of liberty and freedom? Are we not teaching about, about these tyrannical nations that, where countries do not provide their citizens liberty, freedom, choice? No, we're teaching them on the college campuses, as I talk about all the time at Campus Reform, anti-American rhetoric, anti-capitalism, that Christianity is the only religion that is bad. Uh, we're not educating about the other dangers of socialism. Um, right now, the, the college campuses have been a cesspool for liberal indoctrination, and we're getting ready to destroy an entire generation just because conservatives, quite frankly, haven't paid attention to what's happened on the college campuses. Our young people are in, in danger, and we wonder why people like AOC well, and Tal Talib yeah. and, and, and the squad are getting so much support is because these kids are being indoctrinated on the college campuses, it's and more the parents than college, are paying though. for it, and the taxpayers are paying for it. Let's look at the next one. Uh, this is, again, the young man there, Lawrence Jones. He's a traveling uh, uh, newsman-like, and uh, he does interviews. And this is what he said. Millennials don't value patriotism as much as prior generations because of college indoctrination. It's similar to what uh, uh, Cal, um, Cal Thomas said, but it's a little different. He said the value, they value patriotism, family, and religion less uh, prominently than past generations because of the results of the liberal indoctrination on college campuses. Go ahead. All right, a disturbing new poll suggesting a very serious shift in values, especially young, among young Americans. Look at this Wall Street Journal. Younger Americans, they rate patriotism, religion, having children as much less important than they did two decades ago. For example, among Americans 55 and older, nearly 80% said patriotism was very important. Compare that to just 42% of kids, well, to me they're kids, between 18 and 38. 
And of course, it's been a trend we have seen now for some time. Just look at what our friends at Campus Reform found earlier this summer when asking students about love of this great country. Take a look. Are you proud to be an American this year? Nah, not at all. Do you find yourself proud to be an American this year? No. There are so many issues right now that I just like can't say yes that I'm proud to be an American. Are you proud to be an American this year? Nah, it, not as proud as I've been in the past, but I feel lucky. Or what would you say are the reasons that you're feeling that way? Definitely our current president, because he just, I, I'm not proud of him. All right, what does it all mean? It means that as younger Americans feel less and less patriotic, they're also turning towards socialism. That's right, the false promises of socialism, turning towards entitlements, victimhood, blame, away from the foundational principles that made this country great. In other words, far-left professors, they seem to sadly be achieving their goal of indoctrinating our young kids into their socialist radical beliefs, losing sight of the principles that created more jobs, more opportunity, more wealth, more wealth creation than anywhere else in the face of this earth. So in many ways, patriotism is actually what should unite all of us. Liberty, freedom, you make choices. Your life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. That's why millions of people from all over the world, they're dying to live here and become a part of our American family because we are blessed to live in the United States of America. By the way, and our, well, all the people that have paid the price, people that fought in World War II, slammed the beaches in Normandy, those heroes of World War II beating back fascism, Nazism, Imperial Japan, people like my father serving four years in the Pacific, my grandfather serving this country. Never has a country accumulated tremendous resources and power and used it for the advancement of this human condition for not only all Americans, but for the world. And as Barry Farber always said, never has a country accumulated more power and abused it less. From World War II to the rise of communism to the fight today against radical Islamic terrorism, we, the American people, have always fought to protect our freedoms against evil. This is something everybody should know and be proud of. As Ronald Reagan once pointed out many decades ago, freedom is never more than a generation away from extinction. That poll tells me we might be in jeopardy. How many of you know those are just three little snippets of a very pungent, important moment in time that we're listening to what young generational folks are saying, what they're feeling, what they're thinking. And how you know all of this thing that's going on has come from something? How have you hear that? They've learned it somewhere. Can you hear that? They didn't just conjure it up in their own head. They're not smart enough. None of us in here knew anything till somebody taught us. You couldn't even go to the bathroom until somebody taught you. Let me tell you, though, watch this. There is an organization, there is a philosophy that they have made sure that they have instilled and sown into every level of school and every level of learning in our culture here today. Secular humanism, listen to what it is, including excluding God from schools and society. Secular humanism is an attempt to function as a civilized society with the exclusion of God and his moral principles. During the last several decades, humanists have been very successful in propagating their beliefs. Their primary approach is to target the youth through the public school systems. Humanist Charles F. Potter writes this, education is thus a thus a most powerful ally of humanism. And every American school is a school of humanism. What can a theist, a theocratic, theocratic, what is a theist Sunday school's meeting for an hour once a week and teaching only a fraction of the children do to, st uh, to stem the tide of the five-day program of humanistic teaching? Now, this is the guy, Charles Potter, that was part of the start. He met in New York, and this is when the Humanist, Humanistic Manifesto won. There's now three. That was when it was first written, 1930. And even before that, they had met to begin to put it together. John J. Dumfrey, in his award-winning essay, The Humanist 1983, illustrates this strategic focus. 
The battle for humankind's future must be waged and won in the public school classrooms by teachers who correctly perceive their role as the proselytes of the new faith. A religion of humanity utilizing a classroom instead of a pulpit to carry humanistic values into whatever they teach. Now notice this. They want the pulpit to be replaced by the classroom. And that's what their effort is, and that's why on the surveys you see, going to church has decreased because the emphasis has increased uh, to get kids, uh, and they are the source uh, of those universities so they could go uh, and receive the indoctrination from those pulpits. 